It's a new day, ladies and gentlemen, on Press R, and we are very happy to have you on board. Today's edition of the program will be talking about bilingualism and whether bilingualism in Cameroon is theory or practice. And you must have had so many occasions where you question uh, bilingualism in the country. We also know that so much effort has been put in place to make sure that it works. We're going to look at all of that on today's edition of the program. And bilingualism in Cameroon is not a new thing. In January 31, 1972, on the one of the American outstanding newspapers, the Washington Post, the writer there described bilingualism in Cameroon as an asset of Cameroon's trade growth. Have we used bilingualism to actually foster our trade, our development. Those are some of the issues that we are going to handle on the program. And to talk about this, I have people on the set with me who are just the type of people uh, you expect them to discuss this topic. I'm going to start with Mr. Mbomba Henry. Mbomba Henry is a special communication officer for the Minister of Secondary Education. We are glad to have you on Press Asset today, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Ndao. We are also delighted to be here, to be part of this program. And uh, we want to, to thank you first. We also want to say uh, good afternoon to all the viewers of uh, Press Hour. Thank you very much. We are honored by your presence on the set today. Just next to you, we have Mr. Sama Eko Robert, who is Inspector Coordinator General in charge of teaching and promotion of bilingualism in the Ministry of Secondary Education. It's a pleasure to have you on our set today, sir. Thank you very much. It's mutual, Kilian. Yes, and uh, I just uh, uh, twist myself to the left side of this set to welcome uh, Jean-Marc Afesi Mbafo, who is a member of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism which you know so much, the commission that you make bilingualism work in Cameroon, we wanted to say by force or by fire. Uh, you're welcome. To Thank accept. you very much, Kilian, and good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to your tale viewers, and happy Sunday. Yes, I, I hope you're making bilingualism work by force or by fire in Cameroon. We are there to accompany the head of state in his policy and to see how we can get the law on the push of British languages in Cameroon best appropriated by Cameroonians, uh, or better appropriated by Cameroonians and implemented. You are going to tell us on this set uh, how far you've gone with uh, making the law actually work. And close to you, on uh, the extreme left of this set, we have uh, Kenneth Chuo, who is a linguist. Actually, you are a professional translator. Uh, you're welcome to our set. Thank you very much, uh, Kilian. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here once more uh, to discuss on the topic which I cherish so much. So it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for making me be part of the, pan uh, of the pl panel today. Uh, you're going to tell us that uh, you have never missed uh, translating a document. You always run up to get documents to translate so that they appear in English and French at the same time according to the text. Oh, yeah. Um, how do I really answer that question? Yes, you know that uh, it is that policy that documents should always appear in both languages. Right. And uh, no, uh, the thing is, there are times some documents, given the rush nature, uh, uh, given yeah. the rush nature, uh, first signed in one language before they are produced in the other language, but the effort is always there to make sure that whenever a document is going out for public cons consumption, there are at least it's avail available in the two versions. Yes, mm -hmm. we may not be questioning you on the, the effort because yours is to translate, but we are going to question you on uh, why don't they trust you to make sure that in two, three minutes you can translate those documents. Those are some of the things that we're going to discuss on this program, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, the week that is just ended had so many things. Uh, one of them was the fuel price adjustments. We're going to have a comment on that. But before that, the press review, we start our program. 
Emmanuela Vemu did that for us as usual. Emmanuela. The press week ending was dominated by fuel price adjustments in Cameroon. Government increases fuel prices at last in the Guardian Post. Then happy and blue feelings greet fuel price rise in the insider. Cameroon Tribune reports that the price adjustments were inevitable, yet Cameroonians disagree on fuel price increase and say salary increase is window dressing in the post weekend. To the horizon, government makes increase with a human face. Municipal updates presents lessons from Bia's power of silence and unpredictability in managing the statecraft. In politics, 13 political parties are reported to have submitted files for March 12 senatorial elections in Cameroon Tribune. The Cameroon Insider over 10 political parties on the starting blocks. Just when Golengole and Elung Paul flex muscles of a choice of Kupe Manunguba candidates in the Guardian Post, Greedy Northwest CPDM politicians implant stooges and electorates vow to vote opposition in the Herald Tribune. At a time, Elekam scrutinizes nomination files of 2023 senatorial elections in the horizon. SDF is roped in legal wrangle in the post weekend. To the Guardian Post, SDF February elective convention in jeopardy as over 30 party big weeks drag Frundi and Secretary General to court. Then President Paul Bia orders investigation into the killing of Martinez Zogu in the horizon and in all time suspected killers of Zogu are arrested in the Guardian Post though government conceals their identity just when former Defense Minister Mbengo slammed 30 years imprisonment in the post weekend. The Guardian Post reports that for embezzling 23.9 billion safety francs Mebengo slammed 30-year jail term while his wife gets 10 years for complicity in embezzlement of 5 billion safe friends. At a time, Cameroon refugees cry out, we are being killed in the horizon. Private press protests government slashing of media aid in municipal updates and is shocked in the Guardian Post as government allocates paltry 56 million safe friends as subvention. Until I come your way again, this is your hour with the press. We look forward to having you next week for another edition of Press R, where you will be reviewing the press for us, Emmanuel Avebne. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is Press R, and we are broadcasting live from Studio 4 of the Production Center, Mbalatu in Yaoundé. You can watch this program on your handset if you just connect to www.crtv web and you go to our Facebook. We are streaming live from Yaoundé. Now our topic again, I'm going to remind you of our topic. We have one comment that we're going to make right away on fuel price adjustments in Cameroon. Some people call that the increase in uh, fuel prices. And we're also going to talk about this time focusing on bilingualism, whether it is theory or practice in Cameroon. Comment first, we are going to go around the table on the fuel price adjustments that we had during the week. How did you welcome that? I'm going to start with you, Kenneth. Yeah, uh, Mr. Killian, uh, you choose to call it uh, adjustment, adjustment, yes. and I think it's actually an increase in fuel prices. Yeah, um, nobody, nobody would welcome it with joy because you know the amount you use to consume to move around in the, with your car in the, day, in the day, it has virtually changed, and as it has changed, you know. It's even an economic policy because fuel is at the center of the economy. So, <coughs> and um, I am still waiting and hoping that the ripple effects should not be felt on the other products because when transporters will ply the, the distances they used to ply to transport goods, and if they are not making any benefit, they may find it necessary to increase the transport cost. And if the transport cost is increased, virtually vendors will need to change their prices to make their benefits and that will fall on the end user of the product that has not happened yet 
women that Cameroonians have been so responsible, knowing that first they were expecting more. You know, we had speculation that uh, the price of uh, fuel, talk about uh, what we call the Piedmont fuel, which is called super here in Cameroon yeah. and elsewhere, was supposed to come right up to 1,000. There are some countries that have uh, raised it to the uh, uh, level of 1,300, 1,400 because that's the right level. By getting it just by 100 uh, francs for super, that's premium fuel, mm -hmm. and 120 uh, for uh, uh, gas oil, people rightfully think that is just an adjustment. That's why we call it adjustment. It's a slight increase. Should we say like that? Yeah, it's a slight increase, as you said. It's a slight, in a slight increase. But calling it an adjustment, you know, I am not really very comfortable with that. Okay. But however, I salute the fact that despite that increase, the price of domestic gas has remained unchanged. And that is actually something we should be proud of. But yes. We hope to, because in Cameroon, sometimes, you know, they come and present us very nice things. And before we know it, they are changing. So we really hope that that slight increase or that little adjustment as you call it will remain at that level and that in the next three or four months we won't hear that at the pump the first are changing again. sorry the prices are changing again well i personally think that will not change because we've been waiting for that since 2008 and from 2008 to 2023 is a long time um mr echo you are a senior civil servant when you heard about the fuel price adjustment i maintain my word uh, and then you also had the accompanying measures by government that uh, the, the salaries of state workers uh, were raised by 5.2 percent i think you said hey increase uh, fuel price but no uh, i'm also happy my salary will, will be stepped up yes uh, Killian, i must begin by uh, telling you frankly that when we heard of increase in fuel prices and um, accompanied by increase in salaries it was so easy for the average Cameroonian who is a mathematician to take his calculator and say okay if I got 50 liters of uh, say super uh, that's going to be an increase in 5,000 francs and if I do that every week and a month I would have spent 20,000 francs and such a person will now look at the salary change and uh, find out whether what he has as a change is in commensurate with that increase. And I think from there there is a slight, slight worry, which uh, I, I want to comment, like what the other speakers said, that the government, by not increasing the prices of uh, gas, which we use domestic gas, has helped to abate the extra, you know, fear and worry. Exactly. I was going to come to that. You've just got me. <coughs> we should add that not only the, the cooking gas, but also uh, paraffin, kerosene, exactly. which is widely used. Exactly. Uh, 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 Mr. Bomba, by increasing fuel prices, when you look at Cameroonians, the majority are those who don't own cars. You look at Cameroonians, the majority are those who use kerosene, and cooking gas. Don't you think that it's a good economic uh, measure taking to take from those who have and allow those who do not have to live their life? That government was very smart to do that. It can be so, but um, what is important, what I can say is that um, we have to be honest because uh, today we're talking about globalization and um, what happens in Russia today will impact Cameroon. What happens in the United States will f uh, impact Cameroon. So um, I think what I, was, I was saying we have to be honest and the most important thing I observe in that uh, adjustment as you, you named it is that um, Cameroonian accept it. They, uh, they really accept it. So you can actually, when, you, you, well, when the decision comes, we didn't see any movement against the, the, the decision of the head of state. Okay. So uh, okay. Thank we, you very we, much. We are delighted. Yes, uh, uh, Jean-Marc, I, I like to call you Jean-Marc, uh, because out of here I, I like to have you as a friend. <laughs> the price of premium fuel, super, mm -hmm. 
was relatively, the increase was relatively lower than that of gas oil. And we know that gas oil pollutes more. Can we say that we have been reading and thinking that that could be an environmental um, protection awareness or effective decision that was taken so that people should go more for what pollutes <coughs> less? I won't pretend to be at the decision making table when the decisions were being made to on what proportions of increase to give on the different uh, grades of fuel we, which are dis available to us but I think it's it could be interpreted as an environmental uh, protection policy protection policy um, in Cameroon contrary to other countries we have diesel which is cheaper than super meanwhile in other countries it's the opposite exactly you have diesel which is more expensive <coughs> than super so maybe we are getting to that point of environmental awareness where we are trying to now task a tax a little bit more uh, diesel than fuel but to make a draw comment on the whole issue of the price adjustments like you put I, I like that term for me the first thing i noticed and like most of the panelists here have noticed is the way Cameroonians received it and for me it's credit to a number of things but the one thing that stands out for me is it means Cameroonians listen to the head of state speech because head of state in his speech in december talked of the fact that he cannot, he, he cannot handle this for far too long <coughs> and appealed to our conscience and to the fact that we will have to prepare ourselves to this adjustment this full adjustment while seeing how to diversify uh, and work on different other aspects of our economy where we could raise um, monies to uh, support and caution these shocks, exigent shocks we are facing. So for me it was a, it was a sign that Cameroonians truly listen to their head of state okay. and understand where he's leading the country to. So um, yes, it's not always palatable to have these increases, but I think we were properly prepared. Cameroonians were well prepared to receive these, these increases. Thank you very much. We are going to move into our focus for today, but just before we get there, this interlude. At uh, the transition, we are going to move into our focus for today. Ladies and gentlemen, we announced to you earlier, and we are going to uh, treat just that bilingualism in Cameroon. Is it theory or practice? I know you're eager to hear what uh, we're going to talk about here. You already probably have uh, your positions, you have made up your mind, and you have your positions, but just listen. Uh, you're going to get the positions of the experts that we have here. I think we're going to start with uh, Mr. Mbafo Jean-Marc, uh, who is a member of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism. Knowing that that commission is a special measure to make sure that Cameroon, Cameroonians get bilingual, as the text say. Um, policy, can we say that we are moving according to the texts that prescribe bilingualism in Cameroon. Yeah, th thank you once again, Kilian. Um, I think we, we are moving towards, that, towards, towards the appropriation and aligning ourselves to that text, the text, the text of 24 December 2019, since that we're talking about here, yeah, the law on the promotion of official languages in Cameroon which is a fairly new law, we must say. And we are dealing with issues which uh, have are tied to our habits. And we know uh, old habits die hard. And it, it's a work which we have taken on at the commission, the promotion of, and which is at the core of our work at the commission anyway, the promotion of bilingualism, multiculturalism, and living together. And we started our work in 2017. <coughs> in 2019, we have the law which is promulgated. So in two years, we were able to have that as a first output of the law on the promotion of racial languages in Cameroon. Now the next phase is to carry that law to all and sundry. 
to sensitize Cameroonians on the law, to promote the law, to educate Cameroonians on the existence of the law and on the provisions within that law. And for the past three years, that's what the Commission has been doing. And I think when we take stock of the progress which we, are, we perceive on the field, it's encouraging to see the effort that is being made in government ministries, <coughs> in parastatals, even in private, the private sector, which we have visited at various times, the public entities twice, government parastatals twice, the private sector once, uh, local regional and local authorities who have gone around the nation. You see the effort which is being put by different stakeholders at different levels to align themselves to the law and, I mean, start living out what is our true nature in Cameroon as far as our official language is, is concerned. Yes, before I move to another panelist, when we look at the text that we have, we still have so many texts that appear in one language, whereas we know that the texts say both languages will be used, that is any official text should appear at the same time in English and in French. But that is not what we have. Can we say that um, it is an oversight for the Bilingualism Commission? No, it's not an oversight. Um, we have the text again. We're citing the text which is three years old, a three-year-old text. That's section five of, uh, of the law on promotion of official languages, uh, which states that all documents, all information meant for public consumption must be in of two official languages, English and French. At the same time? At the same time. Yeah. Same Published. font size, same color, same position. That is the law. Section 5 of the law on the official languages. But we, we also realize, we're also aware that we have to beat the, 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 the clock in terms of getting everybody aware about this, these new dispositions of the law that we are doing. But also we, we realize on the field we have also some other pro problems tied to logistics which we have to take into, co into consideration, co cons consideration. Uh, setting up of translation units where they were not before, equipping those translation units now to be able to carry out these tasks. Um, and so on and so forth. In some places, they will ask you, okay, well, this text is too long. How do we put it on the same place, in the same size, in the same color? So there are those logistical issues which now uh, we have to, be con to consider in the application of this law. But yes, the law is there. The law must be applied. And we have to now go around the different little challenges we may face or re experience while applying the law. Those who frown at the commission, I said that, that was going to be the last for this first session. The Commi National Commission uh, for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism, those who frown on that commission say it's because by its creation it is a consultative organ. That's what does not allow you to actually make what you want to do work at your level. You have to write reports and probably not influence the replies. Yes, the commission is a consultative organ, and uh, the head of state in creating the commission wanted it as a consultative organ. But I don't think in any way it hampers our work on the field, because every consultative organ it should be measured by its output, and what is its output? The reports it produces, uh, the policy changes it can influence, and I think if you come to the commission we, and you judge us on what our inputs, what our outputs <coughs> ought to be as a consultative organ, I think we've done fairly well. Uh, on that domain. In terms of implementation on the field, of course, again, we receive instructions from the head of state to go down to the field to encourage, to sensitize, to educate, and that too we have been doing for the past three years. So I don't think uh, we are failing as far as the role has been attributed to us is concerned. Now, the question is, of course, and many people ask the question, why don't you guys have uh, a mandate to, uh, to, sanction. to sanction? Yes. We have the law of financial languages that's already there, and right, right, every right-thinking Cameroonian, every responsible Cameroonian should naturally uh, tell himself, this is the law of the land, and I should abide by the law of the land. But also, in Article 28, Section 20 of the law, it mentions that there are regulatory dispositions that will be taken to accompany the law on, of 24 December 2019. In those regulatory dispositions, probably there will be aspects of not just sanctioning those who contravene the law, 
but even just encouraging best practice, incentives for best practice. So for now, we are in the period of education and sensitization. We are adopting a pedagogic approach, and we think it's having its effect on the field. And we, we hope that we don't have to get to the point where we have to start sanctioning and <laughs> repressing again under law that created the National Commission of Bilingualism states that we are there to promote bilingualism and multiculturalism and living together and carry out any other task the head of state will want to give okay. the commission. Maybe okay. the time will come and will give us the task of, of sanctioning. sanctioning and we'll get there. Okay, I think that uh, you've landed so well. Uh, we also hope, um, speaking because we go out there and leave uh, that together, that that last aspect comes sooner than later and i just go straight close to you kenneth you are a professional translator tell us what happens that we have a text published in one language when the law says both that text whatever it is should appear at the same time as uh, mr mbafo just said it's the same font side the same everything equal status and the rest what happens you who are in the translation units okay thank you Killian. as i earlier said uh, sometimes uh, there are certain instruments by their nature by the pressure behind by the nature of the pressure behind those instruments uh, uh, find themselves assigned in one language first before the other one follows, maybe very soon afterwards, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't follow. The thing is, you know, there are certain administrative uh, tasks that come with a lot of pressure. And um, since um, mostly those instruments are conceived in one language, by the time they are fine-tuning it, it, by the time it is ready for signature, there's pressure everywhere. So the first sign in the, or first in, the, in the first language, and then the second version follows. Yeah, but those cases are very rare. Yeah, generally, uh, the, the effort, especially where I work, the effort is made so that both should appear at the same time. That said, there is a <laughs> example. Wait, Kilian, there is something I've seen with the Ministry of... Uh, the Ministry of uh, Public Service, the way the translation department functions, the way instruments from that uh, ministry appear, I think if that structure, if that format is replicated in every other ministry... How is it done there? Yes, you have the same in short it is not like you have two because at the end of the day you have two different documents you have two documents or two different versions of the same document on two different papers so they're actually two different documents whereas if the two could appear on the same sheet it would be wonderful it would be wonderful and this idea where one has to be signed or one version has to be signed before the second version follows it will just die now okay yes and if that is to happen Actually, there are certain realities on the ground that are difficult to maybe, you know, uh, the translation department in Cameroon is very much understaffed. Yes, uh, yes. you so, have started uh, bringing mm. out probably the problem. Yeah. But when you talk about one, a mm. document signed in one language mm. and the other full, mm -hmm. some of us will understand if it's a voluminous yeah. document of, say, 20, 30, 40 pages. But we're talking about communiques of one page. Half a page, we have that in one language. What happens? Well, for that one, uh, it will be difficult to understand. But I think, uh, Kilian, you really know how ministries work. Sometimes, sometimes, especially the ministers, sometimes mine at times closes at 2 a.m. at 3 a.m. He's still in the office. And if there is an emergency... If there is an emergency, the document will be produced and signed at that moment. And if there's an emergency, he may conceive and sign at that moment before it even reaches the translation department for it to be converted into the other language and signed. Yeah, but it is only it can only happen due to the nature of the document and the pressure behind the document. It would not be maybe someone's desire for it to appear that way. No. Well, I will we'll come back to that. Uh, we want to uh, look at the educationist where bilingualism is supposed to be taught that Cameroonians have to be bilingual before the commissions, before the translation unit services and the rest have to come into uh, either put into practice or regulate that. 
What's happening, Mr. Echo? Uh, can we say that there's a problem of teaching uh, both languages to, to Cameroonians, or what's happening? Well, Killian, I must hasten to say that um, at the level of uh, the Ministry of Secondary Education, we are like the production center. Uh, and when we try to apprise ourselves of the rudiments of bilingualism, which has to do with the speaking of English and French and applying the law of uh, 24th of December 2019, uh, uh, which, you know, clearly stated that both languages have equal status and when we comes to when we come to you know writing out for instance headings for instance naming personnel for instance giving instructions we must be able to have them like my uh, uh, friend at the other side said in both english and french and the same character in minesec we have been very is the minister, the minister of, uh, of secondary, secondary education. education. Yes, mm -hmm. we have been very aware of what is expected of us. The will of this, you know, implementation started spinning around and with greater frequency. If you found yourself in Minisec, you will first of all come to the inspectorate or the bilingual inspectorate, where we have the regional and the national inspectors. They have the different texts that they are observing in order to bring up the syllabuses that are fine-tuned to come out with the intention of the government. And the Minister of Secondary Education, Her Excellency Madame Nalova Lyonga, has made it a point of duty that when it comes to documents being brought to her, the first thing she wants to find out is whether these documents are both in English and French. So you have it done probably in English, you have it translated in French, and you bring the two at once, or vice versa. And if it is not that way, I bet you it will not work. And so it waters down to the Secretary of State for Secondary Education in charge of teacher training. It goes down to the IGE, Inspector General of Education, the IGS, Inspector General of Services, and down to the Inspector Coordinator General, as you can tell, right to the big level. So... Um, when it comes to this bilingualism, there is passion in the Ministry of Secondary Education. There is passion when you move to the nearest school and the other schools around. For instance, the nearest school to the ministry is the, um, what you call, Lycée Belen d'Application. That is, Government Bilingual Practicing High School. In that school, we do have implemented a special bilingual program. We call that... Uh, PEPS, you know, which you have a special bilingual education program. In that program, right from the inset, when students come in to form one and CZM, we have a kind of competitive exam that these students write in English and French. And those, for instance, who are in the Francophone subsystem, they will write this exam and equally in the, Franco in this fr uh, Anglophone subsystem, and they will get the best 50. These students are put in these special bilingual classes and they move on the different levels right up to Catrium or Troisium in the Francophone subsystem and Form 5 in the Anglophone subsystem. Then they write the special you know, examination. The GC board organizes intensive French for the Anglophone subsystem. And then we have intensive English, which uh, the, uh, you know, the, um, the, the DEC, you mm -hmm. know organizing from before exams, you know, also put forward. Practically, I've been to some of these classes. These students are exceptionally bilingual. You, at one point, will get bemused to find out that you're not talking to a, an, an anglophone, but to a francophone, and he speaks such exquisite English. So well, these are the practicalities that we see. Well, let us uh, give you that credit, but the question I ask you now, which is um, uh, on the lips of so many Cameroonians out there, that's what he said, is that those bilingual schools that we have, <laughs> bilingual high school, bilingual secondary schools, they are actually not bilingual schools, but one school with two systems moving side by side. Because you have the francophone section in that school and the, the, the anglophone section, the English speaking. That's what we are told. Just to add a little bit to what you're saying, when that came up some time back, 
we used to have them juxtapose classes of the francophone subsystem and anglophone subsystem with the intention to have the students interact and you know be able to pick up from then each how other. Is that a bilingual school? however yeah. We moved forward from that and then we established the special bilingual education yes. program and not virtually all the bilingual schools have that, but we do have, we started off with uh, 50, there were like 40, 50 in number, okay? Now it's gone up to 151 all over the Republic and more schools are applying to belong or put forward to the government that particular implementation and it's working marvelously. Yes, uh, Henry, how do you assess this uh, special pilot uh, bilingual training up to this level that uh, uh, Mr. Eko is talking about? Okay, now uh, I can just tell you that uh, we have on Friday, the closing, during the closing ceremony, we, we, we saw the Minister of Secondary Education. You mean the, the closing ceremony of the bilingualism of week? Yes, okay. Minister of Secondary Education wanted to show something to, to Cameroonians, to the world, that the, what the ICG was talking about. It was something wonderful. That they, it is a debate. A debate. Um, a debate with um, uh, children coming from this program special program of bilingualism in Cameroon there you can you can you can get confused when you you listen to these children speaking both English and French it is marvelous but uh, that is not uh, very important for me I want to share my um, uh, I, I want to to respectfully share the opinion of uh, Mr. Mbafo saying that uh, we are going as far as bilingualism is concerned in Cameroon we are going progressively you know we're talking about uh, we're going gradually because when you read the provision of um, law 2019 you know why i like english english language because in english language we go straight to the point uh, when you when you look at um, this provision it is said that uh, the official languages of cameroon shall have equal value shall have equal value. Mm. But in French, we say, les langues officielles du Cameroun sont d'égale valeur. There is a difference. Diff What's that difference? The difference is that in, in English, say, say in English, it is better to say it in English. That shall, that we are going progressively. Okay. Huh? The idea here is the idea of the progress. That's what we're doing in Minnesota. That's what we're doing, the commission is doing in Cameroon. You I know. enjoy your bilingualism, uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I think that's what Cameroonians are supposed to do. Yes. You, you, you wanted to, to finish that point? Yeah, yes. I, 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 I want, just wanted to, to, to add something. Uh, saying that, um, you know, when creating the commission of uh, bilingualism and multiculturalism, okay. when sending, when appointing an anglophone in the Ministry of Secondary Education, that was a vision of somebody, the vision of the head of state, who wanted, who thought that at a certain moment, we must go, we, 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 we must go straight to the effect bilingualism in Cameroon. So he created the commission, he appointed an anglophone in the Ministry of Secondary Education, as the ICG was saying, where they are, they are, they, they, they are teaching English and French, we have to appoint an anglophone there. Okay. And I want you to, 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 to look at the actions of uh, the minister, Professor Nalo Valyonga, in the Minister of Secondary Education. You know, when that lady, that great lady comes in the ministry, she comes with um, a policy called uh, clean school. Clean school means what? means that we have to remove from school what does not belong to school. And we have to put or to bring in school what had, with the provision of the law and regulation in force in Cameroon. That's what she, she is doing. Saying that... And what uh, does not belong to school, for example, what is that? Cor corruption, uh, uh, so, so, uh, sexual harassment, um, uh, violence, drug consumption, and so on. Mm -hmm. That... Uh, that, 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 that does not belong to school. Okay. And 
in plain school that must be removed and what do you 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 have to 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 to, to listen to look at is that um when the minister the, the, the when the minister was professor manalova leonga comes in the ministry she brings clean school we remove what does not be and we put now things based on the provisions of the law and regulations enforced in Cameroon. That means in terms of uh, pedagogy, in terms of uh, discipline. That's what we are doing till till okay. then. And thank, thank um, you. Thank and you. So uh, we still have violence. Maybe you and the minister, you have to work harder because yeah. uh, violence is still very much. We have uh, drugs in schools. Uh, it means it's a good thing she is doing. You have to accelerate. Actually. Because we still have that in our schools. Now, not only in schools, we are not talking about schools. They, you are doing a good job to teach Cameroonians the two official languages. And I also know that you are including our national languages in the education. But when you go to offices, I, it's not stop. Um, you speak to somebody, the person does not reply you because that person doesn't understand your language. I don't want to use the type of thing that people use here. Um, I don't understand that your language. It's as if go and learn my language before you come for your service. What do you do so that that does not happen? Yes, Killian, you know, as educationists, we are equally psychologists. Uh, this problem of uh, the individual refusing probably to speak the other language is a problem that is well known and understood. However, uh, it is being tackled from a different point of view that kind of valorizes the individual and makes the individual to understand that we are not here to find out whether you speak bad English and criticize you or poor French. Okay. We are here to encourage you to communicate. Exactly. Now, if you were to find yourself in the Ministry of Secondary Education every Wednesday, which we consider as the special weekly day of bilingualism, the first thing that you embrace is some wonderful banners with inscriptions on it, encouraging you with diagrams equally, with people having dialogue, that you should speak the other official language. And <coughs> when you have inspectors accosting guests to the ministry, for instance, at the elevator, and they are asking, because you will psych yourself and say, this is either a francophone or anglophone, and you are asking, comment talevo, and it's like uh, you know, just say whatever you think you can say, even answering to this. Why would you choose just one day out of seven, or <laughs> while out of five working days? Yes. Why we, don't you make it a daily affair? It is a daily affair within the ministry itself, but that special day is for guests who come into the ministry. So probably we don't like make it too much. For yeah, to yeah, yes. Uh, uh, maybe we should have even started by asking, what do you? Uh, consider bilingual Cameroonian or a service? Is it one person who speaks both languages like uh, uh, Henry is doing, speaking English and French with no problem? Or something else? I don't want to give okay. you... Bilingualism goes beyond just the language, you know, speaking and writing English and French within the Cameroonian context. Bilingualism moves further for you to appreciate the culture of the person of the other subsystem. I tell you what, during the uh, FENASCO games, we have children come together from different parts of the country, different regions. It's amazing to see a francophone speaking English to another person because he believes he will communicate the message faster. And during periods like this where you have these games going on, there are no barriers. They speak freely. And it is that freedom which we are trying to encourage for people to just express themselves, not bothering so much about the errors for this start. Because we, as I told you, we are the production center. So we're yes, producing thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have to move uh, to yeah, other please, uh, guests. Just, just yes, uh, before you say what you want to say, answer yeah. this question. Yes. Is being bilingual, when I come into your office, uh, you speak your language, I speak that language for my service, or I speak my language, and you speak your language. I, wh what I can tell you is that uh, I, I have an office in the Ministry of Secondary Education. When I receive um, um, an English speaker, you speak English, I speak English. 
Or you speak English, I can answer in French. Everybody notices that you are bilingual. You yes. Are in, you, are, you, are, you are very much at ease with both languages. Yeah. What about the person who is not like you, who doesn't understand the other language? I, I don't know how we have, I don't think we, we, we still have such issue in the Ministry of Secondary Education for, for, for the today. Because um, we, we the, have to be the, talking the effort, generally, that's the why your ministry will give you credit. But what about other ministries? Okay. We are talking about uh, a situation from a general perspective. The effort today, which is done in the Ministry of Secondary Education, you know, there is a department in, the, in that ministry called the uh, Human Resources Department. Mm. The effort done, there, because, you know, it is a um, department which receives m uh, many more um, 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 how do you call it? Um, uh, users. Users. Uh, users, yeah, okay. When they, when they come, the effort done there is that the ministry the, the minister those who are working in this in that department are uh 70 percent bilingual okay 70 or 80 that, percent that, bilingual that's already good thank that, you thank you uh we're going to go back to the uh, commission uh, national commission for the promotion of bilingualism and multiculturalism um jean marc what are the activities that your commission is carrying out uh, that you can tell us and convince us that these activities, uh, as you said, gradually in the near future, we will know that we will not have people who violate, who disrespect texts that uh, actually make Cameroonians, actually make Cameroon as a country to be bilingual. Before I answer the question, let me answer the previous question you asked to the other panelists. Yes. about the use of official languages in public structures. You yes. get into an office and uh, is this public agent bound to reply me in the language I use? Yes, he's bound. Okay. At chapter 3, article 13 of the law, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 1 states English and French shall be the official languages in public entities. Okay. Sub 2 states that the public, I'm just paraphrasing, mm -hmm. the public servant is bound to serve in user. any of the official languages, each of the official languages. Sub 3 of the section 13 of the law says that the person requiring service has the right to be served in the language of his choice. Okay. That is, very that is the law. Yes. So I think it puts to rest that question. Okay. Uh, 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 it doesn't put to rest. What if the person in the office doesn't serve you in that language what happens he's contravening the law or what happens? what he can do is he can call for assistance he can ask for a colleague who understands your language if it's english he can call for an, a colleague who can communicate with you best to be for you to be served and not just send you away because he doesn't understand your language and some of uh, those uh, who receive in offices are insolent what if there's a case of insolence now the commission has a toll free number okay 15 18 of 15 18 if i'm not mistaken 15 18 yes 15 okay. 18 a toll free number which can be called and we received through that number we receive complaints of discrimination based on language we receive complaints of cultural discrimination based on cultural issues it's a toll free number which is out there for our staff for 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 Cameroonians. if it doesn't work the person can walk over to the commission the person can walk over to the commission and our offices report. are situated to at the the ministerial building number two and report the cases which he is a victim of so we are there to listen to and we receive these complaints and we receive quite a number and you act on them we act on them okay we act on them. Uh, uh, yes, you, you you are supposed to uh, tell us some of the activities that in the short run we will expect uh, okay, before we come to that, yeah. yes, Kenneth. Yeah, I just wanted to make a fast contribution to what uh, the member of the commission is saying. You see, uh, as we said from the beginning, it's an advisory body, uh, and uh, that status of theirs is not enough to have things done the way they're supposed to be done. They need what Mualemu Josh Ngwene calls soft power. Soft power. What is if, that? Yes, yeah, some power that gives them, you know. The, 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 the elbow room to act. He said here that they have a toll-free number that can be called at any time by anybody who feels abused or discriminated against on the basis of language or culture. Yes, when they call, what happens? 
you only write a report. Whereas, the commission is supposed to be the gendarme of bilingualism. I am not saying they are not doing their job. What I'm trying to say is that they need some soft power, as George Nguyen calls it. They need some elbow room to be able to act up to a certain level. You know, so if they had the power to be able to maybe issue a warning, a, a query letter to an organization or to a, to a department or to a service that served a Cameroonian poorly based on language lines, then that would be something good. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you right, but uh, the person who has not been served well should stand the first chance to report. It begins with a report. Exactly. So we should start reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to ask that question that he has started answering later. Since he has gone to that question, I need to get your contributions. Uh, we have a member of the commission here. Uh, give him suggestions that you think uh, he is going to take back to the chairperson of that commission uh, to function better. If you were asked, what should be done to make that commission function better for uh, a better bilingual Cameroon, what would you say, beginning with you, Mr. Aiko? Okay, the first thing I must uh, say is that I do appreciate the overwhelming task that this commission has on its shoulders. Thank you. First of all, they have to handle issues all over the national territory, which is equally an arduous task. Anyway, uh, I will give my own recommendations within the confines of my unit, the second education unit. Mm -hmm. um, I want to wish that we could have better collaboration because uh, between you and I, I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, I know the president of the national committee, I, I mean a commission, I know his uh, private secretary, I know also Ngwane, but I'm just meeting for the first time. He's such a handsome man, I wish I'd met him before. <laughs> no, that's that's not my thing. Thing. However, <laughs> don't you wait, don't you wait. However, <laughs> yes. however, however, I will wish that How our many difficulties... How commission do we have? 50. We have 13 members, a president and a vice president, which makes 15 members. Yes, okay. so you still have yes. a, a huge task it, it, to, to know to, all to, the to, other uh, members. Uh, uh, John Norman, uh, uh, you, you know about three. Uh, uh, the, this okay. is the fourth now. Okay. Uh, go for the other. Right. So, so what would you tell, give him to go and tell the chairperson yes. and uh, the commission as a whole yes, to, I, to I better... Will, I, will, I will think that the commission has to make its presence felt better on the ground. By yes. doing what? And by uh, sending uh, personnel of the committee to visit the different structures in the different ministries. I can't remember the last time I came by any of them. Okay, to make it regular, because he will yes. tell you that they've done that, to make that regular. Yes, yes uh, he more is here. We don't want to make a reference to uh, his boss, because he will carry that information to him. Is that the one suggestion you have? It's uh, because, well, if they now come by us, then we shall be able to tell them our problems. Yes, uh, Ms. Mbomba, please. Uh, yes. Um, uh, it is a privilege to have uh, a member of the com that commission here. What I can, I can suggest to Mr. Mbafon uh, is that if something can be done so that the commission can move from the status of consultative organ to a gendarme institution mm. that will permit the, the, uh, the this institution to be like uh, as I heard Mr. Kenneth congratulating Ms., uh, the minister the Ministry of Public Service and what he does not know is that uh, even in the Ministry of Subject Secondary Education we are doing the same okay ICG told you and I want to tell you that in the Ministry of Secondary Education in addition to the, the translation unit, we have each department has a translator. I say each department has a translation. So that when they bring document in front of the minister, this document must be translated in, in both English and French. So the, the suggestion is uh, that if the commission can, be, can, can move from the status of consultative organ to the other status needed by Mr. Kenneth, okay. the institution. Thank you. Uh, we are going to go around. I have not made my suggestion. Yes, <laughs> your suggestion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my first suggestion is I will repeat the one he has made. Yes. Yes. Uh, repeating it because it's very important. 
they need to have soft power to become the gendarme, the milder gendarme. Mm. That's the first one. The second one, while loading their efforts, because law number 2019 slash 019 of 20 of 24 december 2019 is actually a product of their efforts mm -hmm. yes and that law talks of it on the promotion of official languages then the law has on its section 14 that each public entity shall have an internal body an internal organ which is responsible for the promotion Okay. That's translation, interpretation, and the promotion of okay. languages. Mm -hmm. Yes, wait, it's very important. <laughs> yes. Then, when I, uh, you know, so far, we have seen two organizational charts That's of ministries reviewed with a division for a division of translation or a translation and bilingualism promotion division. Okay. Meaning that in that division, there is a bilingualism promotion unit. So far, only two ministries. Yes. The, minister, the Ministry of Territorial Administration mm. and the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Government. So you need to see, I'm sure you watched CRT, you need to see I think what Minrex, happened. Minrex also. Yeah, I mean, no, Minrex doesn't have a bilingualism promotion unit. It is a division, but in that division you only have, inter sorry, translation and interpretation. Okay. Yes, I would love That's to. That's their domain, so, I know. Yes. So what we are trying to say is, we appreciated that effort, but we wanted to know. We know that for now, since you are only a, an advisory body, you keep tickling those who take the decisions. You keep pushing them so that it should happen. Because I wish to see, I wish to know whether you watched the TV during this week of bilingualism. Did you see what happened in the Ministry of Territorial Administration? Yeah. Yes, the division did wonders, you know. And if five, six, seven, eight, ten ministries could do the same. It will be wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my own suggestion, which I want to share with you and you elaborate, is incentive. Those who are bilingual should be given rewards, special recognitions. They should even be promoted. So, appointed to better positions, and the others will follow. If um, Mr. Mbomba, is bilingual the way he is, and then the uh, appointment proposals commission sits and appoints him, uh, and it's, it's bilingual more than I. I will make sure that I go to school to get to his level of bilingualism to get appointed. Exactly. So yes. we, we, could, we, we, could, we could we could even be more aggressive on that point. Go we ahead. could it could be a ten year, a five year, or a seven year agenda. Yes. We say, for example, from. Let's say by 2030, nobody gets into a professional school with that proof of perfect bilingualism. Yes. Meaning that, for example, if you are the entrance exam into professional schools like Enam, for example, the orals will be done purely in English for Francophones and purely in French for Anglophones. You are not just testing your language. You will discuss, you will show your mastery of your area of specialty in the other language. And it is only on that basis. You won't become a policeman. Whatever rank, yes. if you are not bilingual. You won't get an appointment if you are not bilingual. If we put that as a law, you see, you see, there are people, those very people who say, Sidioki don't like Those same people who used to move out of class when the French teacher was coming in. They are people who take, when they move over to Yawunde for business, the parties. environment brings pressure on them, yes. and then within three months, they speak French and they speak French well. Okay. Those very people okay. who say Sidioki don't like they take three Thank months you. to you. learn German and speak German. <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Mbafo? So he's sending you to the commission <laughs> to, I should say it in other words, to make sure that in strategic positions in this country, maybe ministers, maybe directors general, mm -hmm. but because they will have to face the public and address them in both languages officially, they must be bilingual. What, what I can assure, first of all, thank all the panelists for the wonderful suggestions they have made. But one thing I can assure you all is that I will faithfully restitute these suggestions <laughs> to my boss, <laughs> His Excellency Peter Mafani Musonge. But also, I can assure you that we, we are working on that. I mentioned the article section 28 of the law, which talks about regulatory dispositions that will accompany the implementation exactly. of the law, okay. and which is one of is going to be part of our work this year in our action plan is, is put down. 
I can assure you that we are working on incentives and measures to get people to struggle and fight to align themselves with the Very good. Yes, of the your last um, word, please, yeah, Ms. Daiko. Well, I don't know if it's the last word, but mm -hmm. it's just more or less like contributing. In yes. a recent meeting that I attended, um, something was said about uh, bilingualism in the army. And I think you could take this home and uh, be able to inform the president of your commission that the army has to be priest. Because we all know some time past that the language for training was all exclusively Fine. one language. Mm. But this time around, it's really all the motoral, lateral, you know, set of armies that get together, you know, where you can have a command in another language. Our own army now is, get, is better place okay. to fit in. Thank so you. encourage them. Like thank you, thank you, thank you. My, uh, the, okay. my, the <laughs> studio director, <laughs> the director, producer of this program is telling me that our time is up. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much. I want to thank particularly my panelists, Mr. Sama Eko Robert, Inspector Coordinator General in charge of teaching and promotion of bilingualism in the Ministry of Secondary Education, Mr. Mbomba Henry, who is Special Communication Officer for the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Nalova Lyunga. Uh, Mr. Afesi Mbafo Jean Marc, who is a member of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism. I'm not forgetting my own Kenneth True, who is a linguist translator. Gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for coming and for sharing your opinion with Cameroonians. So there is practice uh, in of bilingualism in Cameroon. Thank you very much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you.